My name is Joy Wang, and I'm one of the technical product managers here at OSI Soft, along with my colleague, Elizabeth Amarel, who is a strategic product manager for uh, integration patterns and advanced analytics. Um, we're very excited to see you all here today. And uh, just a little bit more background about ourselves. Um, we're both very passionate about solving customers' problems, um, as a, a large majority of our time at OSI Soft has been with the product support department, um, where we solved um, business problems with Pi every day for our customers. So, all right, and I'm going to grab this trusty little thing here. Um, so yeah, regardless of what brings you here today, um, whether it's a, related to a work objective or if it's just learning for the future, we really hope that you can get value um, and bring something back with you. Uh, so let's start with a brief agenda. We're gonna start with talking about the why. Why is time series data science enablement so critical and valuable for our customers? And then we'll get into a little bit of a how and uncovering insights with two solutions for you today. Uh, then the next topic we'll talk about is what's now available to you and what's coming next, what's on the exciting roadmaps. Um, and then the fourth is a bonus, so this is a list of resources for you. Um, afterwards, when we uh, upload our slides, you can always refer back to this list of resources for customer talks and whatnot. And we'll also have a little bit of time for Q&A at the end. Okay, so starting with the why, if you are familiar with Simon Sinek, uh, it's the golden circle. And uh, why is time series enablement so valuable to our customers? And why is OSIsoft working on this challenge? Um, our partners and customers have been asking for it. So <laughs> warning, this slide here has a couple buzzwords, but we'll explain. So business intelligence is what we would call descriptive analytics. It's what you use to get a picture of what's happening in your plant and maybe what should change. And then data science is really about taking it one or two steps further on what's likely to happen in the future. Or even if you know certain inputs, what types of outputs should you expect and how do you get to that type of output. And there are many ways to do data science and no prescriptive solution exists for success, right? Yet the end goal of these initiatives is always the same. And that is to uncover insights that will bring you value to back to your business. And always, we don't really know what's inside that treasure chest there of insights, but we keep digging and try to uncover because of the promise of the value. And so what is that value? What we had heard from you, our customers, are a few different perspectives on how you can gain value with business intelligence and data science. Okay, so the first slide here is uh, from a vice president of digital innovation. And so he says, our company-wide objective is to complete a digital transformation across all business units by 2020 and identify potential savings of 20 million from data analytics. So this executive has a mission and he needs help from his organization to translate that analytics into optimized processes and savings. Another perspective is a senior manager of process technology. And she tells us, my team spends one week at the end of every month just preparing yield reports for the business. And that rolls up to one full-time employee a year on just reporting needs alone. That engineer could have been increasing uptime for our critical operations instead. And so value for this senior manager is to leverage her skilled resources for, for doing what they are best at. And, help, and she needs help cutting out some of those tasks that slow down the progress of the business of her team. Can anyone in the room relate to that statement? Show of hands. <laughs> One or two. Cool. Um, and then let, last, we've heard from our data scientists um, customers as well. We have been trying to just get the data for three months. He's clearly frustrated. <laughs> and we cannot start the analysis until that data is accessible, prepared, 
and ready for mo modeling. So as you can see, value means saving dollars from process improvements, it means freeing up your resources, and it means reducing wasted time on data wrangling and focusing on the actual analysis. And just in case you don't believe the sanitized quotes, we have more data. After all, we are the data experts, right? So at PyWorld this year, we looked at the registration data that you provided, and we, we saw some really exciting and interesting statistics. The first one is there is an emerging category of data science professionals um, attending PyWorld, and they actually make up 18% of our attendees this year, which is incredible. Uh, we've seen this growth, at least for me, being the company from the last seven years. So this literally cropped up over a few years. So it's really great and exciting for us. Um, and we also asked about what are your top interests this year at the conference. And the runner-up interest is at 55% interest from all attendees, interest in business intelligence. And of course, the top interest of this conference with 61% votes of 1,000 votes, um, interest in data science. So as you can see, data science enablement is a real business need for the Pi community and peripheral professions. So do we have any of those 18% data scientists here? Please, all right, great. Awesome, <laughs> yes, you, you Yay. get to answer all the questions, no, I'm kidding. Uh, um, so, I don't know about you guys, but those statistics are really, really encouraging for both Joy and I, uh, especially since we're, we're lucky enough to be able to work in this area at OSIsoft. And as Joy mentioned, uh, this interest has really been cropping up, and so we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to enable you guys, our customers, our partners, our users. Um, so. For any of you that read the abstract for this presentation, I hope you got to notice uh, the metaphor that Joy and I ran pretty hard with. Um, we're talking about digging for gold, digging for treasure, uh, and how that kind of is similar to looking for and uncovering insights in your operations. So we'll call this treasure the value to your business. Based on the statistics we just saw, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are already well aware of the potential value to your business that doing advanced analytics and machine learning and business intelligence can provide back to your, to your business. That's why you're all here, right? So um, now how do you plan on finding this treasure? That's where we come in. Uh, our goal and our mission is to create products and software to help you find that. Uh, we can't give you a map that says exits a spot we, but we can provide you tools to help you get there, bringing the people that you need, the technology that you need, and the processes that you need in order to get there. Hopefully, we can help you do it faster, save some time, save some money. So in order for you to start understanding how you can uncover insights, we're going to walk you through a couple examples of how OSIsoft has actually been doing the same thing with our technology. A very common use case that we've heard from our, our customers and our partners time and time again is around business intelligence reporting. So here we have a business intelligence dashboard. Uh, and the, the main kind of item in the screen there is a bar chart. Um, and it's showing the difference in the amount of cooling versus heating um, at our San Leandro Tech campus building. We've got a 12-month report here. Um, but the actual columns there are representing uh, individual rooms or groups of rooms that are controlled by the same devices. Um, and what's really interesting is that you can actually start to immediately see some of the patterns that we've been detecting, that we've got a lot more cooling going on than heating. The, the cooling is in the, the blue, and then the orange represents the amount of heating going on. And then also, on the far left side, the, the first five uh, cooling blue rectangles there actually represent, um, very interestingly, they're all at the top, uh, top floor and one side of the building. Um, so that's a really interesting pattern for us, uh, and our, our engineers are actually using this dashboard um, as we make changes to our operations. We can actually go back and see how we're affecting those over time. Um, you can easily change the time range using the same underlying data set. 
And there's a lot more valuable information under there as well. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the room, uh, the time of, or excuse me, the floor of the building and the side of the building. So obviously weather and outside temperatures playing some, some impact there. The second use case that we're highlighting today is around uh, machine learning. So our, our team of engineers has also been analyzing uh, the systems, uh, the heating and cooling systems of our headquarters buildings, uh, particularly looking around effects from the weather uh, and also the, the time of day. Uh, so what you're looking at here, we've got three charts, and above them there's three different sliders uh, where you can change the wind speed, outside temperature, and hour of day. And then those inputs are going directly to the machine learning model that we've trained uh, in order to see what the actual effects of changing those could be. Um, so we're starting to use this to see where we can find some areas for optimization, especially when the building's unoccupied. Uh, for example, on the left-hand chart here, we're looking at uh, time at 2 a.m. Uh, so the actual number of active heating and cooling devices, which you can see with the dark uh, black band there, are around eight going down to about six, um, represents the total number of, of heating and cooling devices that are active. So we're pretty low there, which is good. But then on the next two, we actually are looking at 10 a.m. once the building's been fully occupied. And you can see that that definitely jumps up um, and then the difference between the middle and the right, we've got a different outside temperature that we're looking at. And so we're gonna use this to see how we can optimize our operations. Uh, again, looking at times when the building's unoccupied, uh, maybe we need to change some of our scheduling. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can look into now by having this bottle uh, that we've prepared, uh, actually using the same data set that we actually used for the business intelligence report as well. But what's really supporting all of this? The data, obviously, that's, that's why we're all here. Uh, so this is just a very small subset of the data that's supporting the analytics on the previous two slides. Uh, we've got some metadata here, we've got a lot of time series here, we're looking at interpolated values, um, but we need a lot of data. And it's not just any data. It has to be shaped and formatted specifically for the analytics that we wanna do. You've gotta have it organized, filtered. You've gotta have people doing uh, feature engineering in order to get more valuable data sets into there. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you actually have to do um, in order to actually get valuable information to support your analytics. So thankfully, that's where we come in. So we build products that help you do this. Uh, it, it's our goal to provide data infrastructure that supports you in your data science initiatives, make it easier, make it faster, and ultimately, we just wanna help you get where you need to be in order to keep your operations running efficiently as possible. So are you interested in seeing how you can do this today with Pi Integrators? I hope so, because Joy's gonna show you how anyways. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. All right, so the first solution that we recommend is Pi Integrators. And you've probably seen this slide many times this week, including this morning. Um, but it's an important message, so we're showing it again. And that is that Pi Integrators makes it easy for you to kickstart your analytics projects um, through these three value statements. Uh, and it can enable you to work with your operational data in a tool that you may be comfortable with. So, this here shows a high level data flow diagram of how the Pi system and Pi integrators could enable and operationalize your advanced analytics. I wanna make sure to call out here that this is, this is just one way to do it. Um, but let's walk through this uh, high level architecture diagram a little bit here. So on the left hand side here, you can see that um, you can connect to data warehouses and, and end business intelligence tools um, where you can slice and dice that pie data, maybe join it with uh, other, type, other dimensions of your business data like finance um, and, and provide that holistic view of reporting uh, right up to the top level of the organization. In the middle here, uh, this is another use case of being able to prepare curated data sets for data lakes uh, so that you can use it to train your algorithms um, and, and the like for machine learning or predictive modeling. 
And if you have a use case for real-time streaming the latest updates and values um, into a predictive algorithm, perhaps you want to score it and get a real-time outcome, uh, you can use the messaging hub and the list of streaming targets that we have available with the integrators. So again, um, I'm going to show the first use case, which is how do we enable business intelligence reporting. And I bring it back to this illustration. Uh, this one is in Power BI, but with the right data square, you can do this with any tool, such as SAP Lumira, Tableau. And in this next uh, slide here, I'm going to show a demo of SAP integration, which is our next product milestone, uh, the beta for the Pi integrator for SAP HANA. So let's take a look. All right, and we start, uh, and I'm just gonna show you the end result of what you can achieve. Again, really trying to hit that home. Here's a preview of the data in the UI, and you can see that it looks exactly the same uh, in the end destination here, which is an SAP database that we also access in the UI. So how do you start? And we start by maybe, I wanna create a bivariate analysis of my heating units. Um, and I go into the UI and I select an AF database where my data is located. And I take a browse, I get through my devices and do some data selection here. I know that for these types of assets, I'm interested in cooling, heating, uh, maybe the occupied status, CO2, um, room temperature and room metadata. And using the power of AF templates here, we can genericize this query and really get the same attributes for the whole fleet. Now step two is further curation of your data set, filtering, interpolation. When do you want your data to start? What types of in interpolation intervals? Filtering out those null values. And here I want uh, one hour for my interpolation interval. Once I'm ready, I, I see that preview here in the UI, then the, all that's left is to choose and endpoint. And for this demo, I'm sending to SAP via an ODBC connection. And uh, we're ready to publish. And you can see some statistics and logging too of your publishing results. But now, let's go into SAP, I'll refresh the database, and we can begin the fun work, which is analyzing that data set and uncovering the um, subject matter expertise uh, that you have and the data that uh, can support the science. All right, again, we love data and we want to just show you how um, the data for our customers who have realized the return um, on their investments with the Pi system and Pi integrators. Uh, so on the left hand here, we have Henkel who is able to achieve greater operational efficiency um, by predicting when a transition occurs, thereby saving 5% of their processing time. In the middle, we have Invenergy, who was able to actually predict catastrophic gearbox failures at least one month in advance. Uh, and last but not least, United Utilities um, proved an ability to predict uh, sewer, sewer overflows um, at least six hours in advance so that they can respond in real time and prevent uh, and protect the environment. All right, and now Elizabeth will show on our second solution. Thank you, Joy. All right, so Pi Integrators released today. Uh, we have a lot of customers getting a lot of value out of those products. Uh, but now I have the uh, distinct honor of sharing with you something that we have in the works, uh, specifically around OSI Soft Cloud Services. I hope that many of you got to see the uh, keynote this morning. Uh, we had Chad and Janelle give a really good introduction and overview of OSI Soft Cloud Services and why you might want to start thinking about uh, using some of uh, the opportunities there to extend your, your Pi system infrastructure. Because they really walked you through how we're, we're targeting partners and developers uh, with our first release. And then later on, uh, the next use case that we're really going after is, again, data science enablement. Uh, so we've been working on um, a new service that we're going to add into the mix here. Uh, and that gives you the ability to create data views. Um, so I'm going to get into that on the next slide. But I do want to, for any of 
anyone that wasn't at the keynote this morning give you a brief intro to OCS. We've got, uh, it's a cloud platform. It's not a Pi system running in the cloud, uh, but there are similar capabilities and features that we hope to enable uh, by having OSI Soft Cloud services. Um, and so it's really designed to be compatible with your Pi system and with our other edge technologies. So you can use multiple, multiple um, areas of the software and infrastructure depending on your use cases. And they all work very well together. So we've got data ingress into OSI Soft Cloud Services. Uh, Janelle talked this morning specifically about the Pi to OCS connections that we've been working on. Really easy and quick way to get your Pi system data into OCS uh, to do some of the more uh, advanced sharing capabilities and uh, like we're showing off here, the data views for data science enablement. So what are data views? Uh, Joy showed you how the integrator creates curated, prepared sets of data for analytics. Data views, very similar. Uh, in fact, you know, they're solving a similar use case. And there's a lot of things that we've learned by having our customers use the integrators that we wanted to bring forward from the Pi system into OSI Soft Cloud Services. For our first release of data views coming later this year, we're really targeting the developer data scientist. Uh, so this is someone that's uh, very comfortable and would prefer to programmatically uh, create and access uh, this data set um, rather than having to publish it to an intermediary database uh, like AWS, Azure, any of the targets that we support with the integrators on-prem, these resources actually live in OSI Soft Cloud Services. And so when you're ready to interact with the data, you've defined the definition around which streams you want to include. Uh, you give us some other parameters around index, uh, time context, uh, start and end, time range. Uh, so you provide that definition, and then when you're ready to get the data, serve it up to users and applications, you query it through our OCS REST APIs. All right. So once you've queried it, you're then able to uh, surface it to applications to do machine learning. You can also support the business intelligence reporting use case, and more visual analytics, um, lots of different use cases you can support uh, with these data sets, with these data views. And one of the, the interesting things with using OSI Soft Cloud Services is that you can actually use it as a bit, kind of like an aggregation layer. You can support multiple Pi system connections, as well as you have the ability to ingress from different edge sources and other cloud systems as well. So data views kind of give you a way to do, um, bring all of the information together and submit all of that to your applications for analytics, uh, rather than just uh, Pi system by Pi system like you might be doing today. All right, so I want to remind you of the, the slide I showed earlier. Again, this is the result, kind of, the visual result and the illustration of uh, when we submit the data to the model that we trained using that data set, um, and when the user slides uh, and gives different inputs, we feed that back into the model and we get the, um, the results that you see here. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of uh, a demo, how we're doing that. Uh, so shout out to my colleague, Dallas Swift, who put this together for me. I'm not a data scientist as much as I wish I could call myself one, I'm really not. But I do like to work with them. Uh, so you can see we're changing some of the inputs here. We've got wind speed, outside temperature, it's in degrees Fahrenheit, and the hour of day. Uh, so 10 a.m., uh, 62 degrees Fahrenheit, going all the way down. You can see uh, every time we move, uh, we're getting back the results based on the inputs to the model. Uh, so the, the top line there on the chart is the total number of active heating and cooling devices, uh, and then the blue line is cooling devices, the yellow line is heating. So how did we actually uh, create that? Well, we needed a lot of data, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a data frame that we created. I'm showing off a, a Jupyter notebook here. So we used Python and some scripting there to bring in, query this data set, this data view that we created in OSI Soft Cloud Services. Now I'm showing you the, the data frame here. We've got a time aligned, we've got some asset information, the, the devices there, the heating devices, some metadata, and of course the operations data. So I'm just gonna run this notebook. I'm running some cells that are uh, doing kind of the definitions of the, the 
queries, and then we do the connection into OCS. Uh, so we have tokens, uh, use tokens, get that back, very secure. And then the actual data view is a JSON object. So it's actually pretty complex. Uh, I'm not gonna run through all of the individual components right now. There's a, a talk going on at 2.30 that one of our developers and uh, Dallas Swift, a data scientist, is actually gonna run through the different components that make that up. Uh, but you could see that it was pretty long. Uh, you basically provide the, uh, a search string for which data items from OCS that you wanna include. Uh, you also have the ability to group those if they're related, perhaps if you want to compare uh, two similar types of assets. Uh, if you have some metadata in your system, you can uh, choose which streams are related to certain metadata and then use that to group. So you can use that when you're comparing the temperature of one to another. And then you also provide the index. Uh, in this case, we are supporting a, a time index in OCS. OCS also supports uh, multiple indexes and secondary indexes, so not just time. Um, so we don't support that yet in data views, but it is something we'll be working on. Um, if you have any use cases around that, definitely want to talk to you, so please come up to me later on. All right, so we've just shown you two pretty different solutions, but very similar. Um, and I want to take a minute to go over some of those similarities, because uh, there are really a lot of the benefits that we've seen our customers that have adopted Pi integrators, what they've learned, what they've been able to achieve, and we're using those as some guiding principles for what we're developing in OSI Soft Cloud Services. So this first one here is around trustworthy data, ensuring one version of the truth. We're your system of record. We know that and we don't take that responsibility lightly. And your analytics are only as good as the data beneath them. So it's our job to make sure that your, your users trust the data, trust the analytics. In order to do that, um, having our applications help you in that kind of data preparation and those pipelines between uh, all the way from collection to analytics uh, is really, really beneficial. So the second item there is um, just kind of reminding you about the time-aligned operational data sets, shaped, formatted data in context. It's a lot of words there. Uh, these are, this is really what we're, we're providing to you using the integrators, using data views and OSI soft cloud services. This is how we can help you uh, do, take on your data science initiatives, do your advanced analytics faster, easier, take on um, our products, help you do that faster and easier. So the third item here, integration with your choice of advanced analytics platforms. We understand that there are a variety, many, many tools out there to do your analytics. There's cloud platforms that have their own built-in applications. There's uh, any number of tools. I just showed Jupyter Notebook. Joy talked about SAP Lumira, Power BI for business intelligence. There's a lot of different things out there. And we want to not make that decision for you about what you want to use. Uh, so we're trying to take a vendor agnostic approach to this and support a wide variety of applications. Um, and a lot of this is also, we want to give you the flexibility and freedom to change your mind. Maybe you start working with one application and then you want to start doing something else with a different application. We're serving up data sets that can be reused. Um, and this really helps, again, save some of that time and effort from you having to redo things. Repeatability is often very, very um, important in the world of data science. And then finally, enabling people, process, and technology with agile and iterative workflows. It's not all about the technology, unfortunately, for us. <laughs> you have to have the people and the process and the technology all working together in order to be successful. We've heard this time and time again from our customers. The, the three use cases that Joy talked about with the Pi integrators, it's not just the technology, it's not just doing the analytics, it's having the subject matter expertise from your engineers working together with data scientists. It's about having the right processes, the ability to go back and change things quickly. Um, so those are all really important to come together in order to be successful. So now that I've talked about some of the things that are similar across these two uh, solutions that we've been talking about today, I also wanna highlight a couple things that are different. Uh, anybody that's been coming to the talks about Pi integrators or you're familiar with them already, most of this should, you should already know. 
um, but specifically for data science enablement with Pi integrators in the Pi system. Again, just highlighting the fact that we support both tabular data sets and streaming. So last year, we introduced uh, an advanced capability, an advanced edition of the product that includes streaming data, not just your uh, row column bulk data sets. You can stream to Kafka, Azure Event Hubs, uh, SAP HANA Streaming, um, uh, AWS Kinesis. Um, this is really to help uh, operationalize once you've trained your model. So you can train, deploy, operationalize, product productize and retrain all in one application using the integrator. Also during Joy's uh, demo, you got to see that there's a very easy to use, uh, no code required, drag and drop uh, configuration experience for integrators. This comes in very handy when you have subject matter experts, engineers uh, that aren't data scientists, but that are helping to prepare these data sets for them to use. Uh, they're not necessarily going to be comfortable developing them using code, so this UI is actually really helpful for them. They can, in just a few clicks, access the data that they want from AF, filter it, uh, change it up, modify it however they need to that the data scientist has requested, and then they can publish it. And, and that's just what Joy uh, demoed for you. And then third, uh, one of the most important things uh, that we keep hearing from our customers that have used the integrators is the importance of having an asset framework defined to support that. Um, even customers that didn't have an asset framework defined before using the integrator but had to create one to use the integrator have come back to us and told us about how important it was for the success of the analytics. Uh, having that, that structure around the asset information, the metadata, um, all of those kind of qualities and, and things that may not be directly in the underlying time series data, uh, but you're getting that through your AF analytics, your event frames, this is all really crucial information that you can support uh, going through the integrator. On the other side of the aisle, uh, we have data science enablement with OSI Soft Cloud Services. So there are a couple key differences. The most obvious one is that you're using a different data platform. Uh, so OCS, like I mentioned earlier, Cloud, cloud platform, um, it, does, it is compatible with the Pi system. You can send your on-prem Pi system data directly to OCS and then enable analytics from there. But it, an important part here is that it's hosted and managed by OSI Soft. So you don't have to take care of the hardware, the software, no maintenance. We take care of all of that for you. So that's obviously a big bonus. Second, uh, I think I touched on this as well, is that there's the ability to aggregate from multiple Pi systems. So you're not just tied to the data in one system, but you can have an aggregation layer where you bring in multiple Pi systems worth of data, whichever you choose. It doesn't have to be the whole system. You can also bring that together with other edge data, source, data sources, uh, perhaps information from the edge data store, uh, and also other cloud information or other databases, you can also bring that into OCS uh, to really have a complete picture. Uh, complete and very valuable data views can be built off of that. Third, uh, enterprise support with uh, scale and resiliency of cloud architecture. Uh, so obviously with the, the boom of the cloud, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, to allow you to have more respondent and performant queries and analytics by taking advantage of the cloud infrastructure. Um, take it, you can take advantage without having to modify anything on your end and have us scale out as required to support some of your larger queries. A fourth, uh, again highlighting the fact that these are, are tabular, tabular data sets at this point in time and it's really exposed via a queryable surface area. Uh, rather than with the Pi integrators where you're publishing the data into external systems and then querying it from there, we give you the ability to query OSI Soft, service, OSI Soft Cloud Services directly to access these. Uh, so we're trying to minimize a little bit of the, the data copying and some of the challenges that can come along with that. And finally, 
I also mentioned earlier the, the programmatic creation and accessibility of the data retrieval through our OCS Trust APIs. Uh, this is really going after support for more developer-friendly access, uh, and this has fit in well with a lot of the processes uh, and applications that we've already started seeing people want to use. So I'm sure you're all wondering, when can you get your hands on it? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, so what we're developing now, specifically in OSIsoft Cloud Services, really the things that I've already been talking about tabular data sets, interpolated data, and then we're also, even though I didn't show it today, working on an interactive UI to do some of that building of the data view definition as well, in the case where you do have more subject matter uh, experts rather than actual developers wanting to do the curation, uh, or initial curation even, uh, of that data view, and then have an analyst access it and then modify it as needed for their use. So after that, um, what we're considering next in, in development around this use case is automatic metadata creation. Now, what does that mean? We've heard several times that a lot of you have interesting information and context and metadata actually stored in your PyTag information, the name, the description, so on and so forth, uh, the range, all of those kind of things that you've already built into your platform. Uh, we want to see how we can use that. Uh, and help you kind of jumpstart the, the metadata and the context work in OSI Soft Cloud Services. Uh, so we're gonna start working on a new service in OCS that uh, allows you, gives you the ability to make uh, design patterns uh, and rules that we'll look for in your tag information and in your stream information, and then we'll create metadata based on that that you can then use throughout the rest of the platform. Uh, so that's just getting started here, and we'll talking, be talking more about that um, probably at the next conference. Then after that, uh, we've got a few areas of research that we're, we're looking into. Uh, this is where I need your input. If any of these really strike your fancy, uh, come and talk to me, let me know, uh, hit up the feedback portal, uh, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> uh, the first one here is around raw data. You've all asked for how to expose raw data sets, not just interpolated ones. Um, understand there's a lot of value here. Data scientists really want all of the information in front of them, make their, their own interpolation, do those things on their own after they've seen the patterns and the underlying data. Definitely valuable. We still need to research how to actually make this happen. Uh, so again, if this is something that you've heard from your users or you wanna do, please come talk to me. Then the second two items here are about additional ways that we can help uh, make better features or, or help your, your analysts make better features, actually. Uh, and one of those is around adding calculations to OSI Soft Cloud Services, and the other one is continuing down that path of a, a context layer, uh, similar to what you might be, uh, have known with, with AF for the Pi system. All right, um, and before I hand it back to Joy, if any of this has piqued your, your interest and your curiosity level, please reach out to me. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Amaral, eamaral at osisoft.com, and uh, it'll also be, also be on the last slide with Joy's as well. Uh, we will be launching this into a, a preview program, starting to get some, some interested eyes on it, so please let me know if you would like to join us. All right, and about the Pi Integrators Roadmap, here is a look at what we have going on for the rest of the year. Uh, under the Developing Now section, um, as I mentioned, our next milestone is the Pi Integrator for SAP HANA, a complete revamp of the UI and backend there uh, to be up to par with the latest Pi Integrator framework. Um, in addition to uh, some of the bug fixes and UI enhancements, we are also migrating the architecture of streaming analytics support uh, to Kafka. And so you will be able to use Kafka to then connect to SAP streaming analytics or use it independently as well. As far as the Pi integrator for Azure ArcGIS, some users for that in the room. So uh, we are really allocating a lot of our efforts 
on uh, the testing and um, maintaining compatibility with the latest updates from Esri software. And so I'm happy to report that if you are currently wondering if you should upgrade to Esri ArcGIS Enterprise 10.7 or the latest version of ArcGIS Online, uh, the integrator, the current integrator will support uh, both of those with full compatibility. So considering next, um, let's talk a little bit about Google Platform integration. So you've seen here that uh, we are providing the best of breed tools that are of your choice, and it's not limited to the one of the other up and coming cloud platforms, Google. Uh, so as you know, we provide both tabular and streaming data sets. Uh, so we're right now investigating two, uh, two new writers. One would be to Google Cloud Storage, uh, which can also integrate with uh, Google BigQuery. That's, that's one of the writers we're looking into next. And then certainly we have also investi been investigating a streaming solution, Google Cloud PubSub, uh, to just offer more flexibility here. And what you don't see pictured, even though uh, it is still very important, is we are still providing um, bug fixes and usability enhancements, and that will be scheduled in a service pack release uh, somewhere on that middle platform, as, middle section as well. And as Liz said, researching future. So this is a really important category for us where we really like to get your feedback. Uh, MathWorks MATLAB integration. Talked a little bit about this on day one. Um, so last year, we did show this integration on Pi AF Asset Analytics. Uh, and since then, we have learned more about the use cases and uh, what it takes to deliver some of the, those outcomes. And so we're researching that right now and to enable this capability with Pi integrators uh, to be able to stream to MATLAB production server, for example. And so where we would really like to hear from you is, is this something that you have planned business objectives around in the near future? Um, are, are you considering any other types of um, tools to do similar things than, uh, as what you can achieve in MATLAB. And so please come talk to us at the booth um, and, or talk to me personally. Uh, my contact information will be in a following slide and we would love to hear from you to get some more requirements on this. All right, so to summarize here today, what we have been able to show you is um, uh, two types of use cases, business intelligence reporting and process modeling and predictions with two, two of our tools, one you have available today and another one coming soon. And hopefully with these tools, we can enable the outcomes we talked about um, earlier. First of all, making that trustworthy data available um, and realize potential savings of thousands of dollars right, or, or saving the environment. Um, you can also accelerate your data science workflows to more efficiently use your employee resources for the things that they are experts in. And last but not least, as one of those experts, right, you want to be able to eliminate weeks and months of time doing the mundane tasks of getting the data, preparing it, making it ready for analysis. Okay, and we have some resources available to you for the rest of the day, day three. Uh, I already mentioned this earlier, but come to the data science booth. Both Pi Integrators and OCS Data Views are under the same umbrella, so you can talk to the developers, product specialists, and get live demos. Uh, for the talks, we have one more coming up at the developer track, as Liz mentioned, and also some more that are up uploaded and recorded for you. And the customer talks on uh, both Pi Integrators and the OCS data views are available too. And as always, if you do have feedback, as we say, if it's not shared on the feedback portal, it didn't happen. So this really is our system, a record of what you, your demands and needs in the near future are. So please communicate with us through the portal to share your ideas and uh, maybe there will be others who also, sh who also share that similar need. Okay, here's our contact information. It'll be available on the slides as well when we upload it. And we have time for questions. Wanna come up for questions? Yes, uh, please wait for the mic, it's coming. Jason, up here.
Thanks. Um, where is OCS hosted and who hosts it? Oh, we host it. It's built on Microsoft Azure. On Azure. So available globally in different locations? Then? It will be eventually. So right now, uh, we have a single production cluster running in North America. We're working on a European one right now. Uh, we will grow and expand that as we get requests. So if you have specific requests for different geographies, uh, the feedback portal would be a great place to put that. Um, but yes, we do intend on growing that as necessary. Thanks. Um, hi, um, this is Shing from Sunk Energy. Uh, we, um, we get requests to provide maybe more than 1,000 tags for the last 10 years to data science team. So for Pi Integrator, do you guys have any workload or any bad file load, something like that? Uh, any what? Sorry, last we need 1,000 tags from Pi. We need to send mm -hmm. 1,000 tags from Pi in the last 10 years to, to, to data science team. Okay. So um, can Pi integrator can do that? Or? Yes, yes. So we do have different varying licenses, up to 100,000 um, attributes. And uh, yeah, we can certainly dis yeah, discuss that. But th the limit is very much so uh, up to 100,000 tax. Does that answer your question? OK. Um, so is uh, OCS is part of the EA or because in EA I believe we have connector right so is OCS will be replacing connector? Or? Replacing what? Uh, connector. Replacing connectors? Yeah. No, no. Connectors are still part of our uh, pervasive data collection strategy. Um, at, at some point we will be working on, uh, in fact I think this is already being done, uh, connectors that will support uh, sending data to our various um, platforms like OCS and the Pi system and the Edge data store. So that's in the works. Uh, but no, OCS won't we be replacing connectors uh, and I don't believe it will be part of the EA, EA agreement either. Um, but those are still details that we're working on. All right. All right. Thank well, you, everybody, for your time. Oh, sorry. Just oh. housekeeping items. <laughs> um, lunch is in two locations today, right over there and also at the Park 55. There's a developer lunch. And then uh, it's Throwback Thursday tonight at Geek Night. So we hope to see you there. Thank you, everybody.